I would like to ask you a question. And I believe this question will determine many things about you, about your life. Now, listen to this question. What makes you attractive? Is it what you are wearing? Is it the shoe you are wearing? Is it your hairstyle? Is it your car? Is it your house? What makes you attractive? Who, can, who wants to tell us? You, you, you are going to tell us what makes you attractive yourself. It is my joy because no one wants to be around somebody who mourn and frown always. What makes you attractive, madam? What makes me attractive is my attitude towards other people. Your attitude? Yes, man mm. of God. What made Jesus to be attractive? Let's go. I see there's a lady at the back there. What made Jesus to be attractive? His personality. His personality? Yes. But what, was in his, what is it that was in his personality? Huh? I can hear you. Love. Huh, I can hear you. Love. Love. Hey, wow, clap for them. Wow. And uh, so they've answered that question. What made Jesus attractive was what? Love. Love. Thank you. Let us go to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, when we take our proof text from verse 5. It says, Now hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, who was given to us. Are you listening to that? Hope does not disappoint us, because the love of God has been poured into our heart by the Holy Spirit. And we also we read that John 3.16, For God so loved the world. Ephesians 3.18, Galatians 5, verse 22. The first fruit of the Spirit is love. That is the first one in Galatians 5, 22. John 14, verse 15. People of God, the year has just began the year 2022. We have tried to answer the question, what makes you attractive? We have listened to many answer to that, many explanation to that. The first thing that God gives to us when we become born again, the first thing that God gives us when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior is love. Is what? Love. That is the first thing that God gives us when we accept Jesus. And the first thing we must possess when we become co-workers with God is love. A man may be very successful as a lawyer and yet does not have love for his clients. 
A man may be a very successful doctor and do good in his practice as a physician and yet does not have love for his patients. A man may be a very successful businessman, do good business and come on well very come on very well in his business and yet he does not have love for his customers. You have seen it. Some places when you enter there, how the owners are towards you. You even say, is this the owner? You become scared. Is this the owner? The way he's frowning in the face. But you are going to buy there. You are bringing the money. So you become shocked. Ah, is this the owner? Yes, yes, he's the owner. But you'll be very shocked how their attitude but the, the business is doing very well, but they don't have love <laughs> to ask their customers. In John 21, verse 15, we are told that no one can do the work of God without love. The first question Jesus asked Simon Peter before he commissioned him, before he gave him an assignment, he said, do you love me? Three times. He says, yes, Lord, I love you. He said, feed my lambs. Take care of my sheep. That's the first question. Simon Peter, do you love me? This means no one can do the work of God, can be a co-worker with God without love for God. Love is the only tree that can produce fruit in this sin-cursed world. It is acceptable to God. Love. The first impulse of a new convert is love. It is easy to reach a man when you love him. Because love breaks all barriers and sweep them away. Barriers such as race, religious, ethnic group, biological background, love breaks all barriers and sweep them away. John 3.16 was love in action. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave. In that Ephesians 3 verse 18, it tells us about the breath the width, the depth, and the height of God's love. But there are length, height, and depth of his love we do not know. The apostle there was praying to understand how wide, how high, how deep is the love of God. It was past finding. If you study your Bible, you will find out that the love of God is unchangeable. We were once life laughed at one time, but the very same people who laughed us yesterday 
today their love have grown cold towards us this makes or tells us that there is a huge difference between human love and god's love human love is but a shadow of god's love god's love is not only unchanging but it is also unfailing that is god's love the word love has been watered down in our day the word love has lost its original meaning today people love you or today people love for selfish classic and material reasons today people love you because of what they can get from you today people love you because of the connection you can provide the support you can give that is all ministry does not start with love for people but it start with love for god if i say i love people i say i love you where does that love come from that is why jesus said to simon peter he did not say do you love the people he said do you love me if you love me take care of my lamb feed my sheep this means ministry start with love for god you must first love god and when you love god that love of god will overflow to others who will now go to others that is what we call love without condition love without expectation this is what made jesus attractive love if love made jesus attractive what makes you attractive is it the car you are driving is it the clothing you wear your hairstyle your makeup your house all material things you have In John 14:15 Jesus plainly said if you love me keep my commandments by doing what God wants by doing what Jesus wants we are demonstrating our love for him not only with mere words but with action and truth we are commanded to love god does not ask us if we feel like loving we are commanded to love it is our responsibility to love this means if you miss love you miss life the question now is that how do we start loving the best way to love is to start with someone who hates you someone who does not see anything good in you someone when he sees you he frowns wa swinya he has bad feelings towards you that is the best way to start loving you start with that person when we do that we are copying jesus kind of love loving our enemies haters our persecutors 
seems unreasonable humanly it seems what unreasonable until you realize that hey can a god loved me while i was still a sinner night clapping party fornicating stealing lying destroying separating god loved me at that point that is why the best way to love is to start with your enemy we were all once an enemy of god and it is his love that attracted us to him he who loves brings jesus on the scene let me tell you something the more you love god the more you will love your neighbor because god is love that is why the first thing god gives you is not blessing people are going to church for blessing promotion this the first thing god gives to us when we encounter him is love the rest will follow faith hope and love the bible said the greatest is what love the greatest let me ask you a question again what is it that will make heaven attractive is it the pearly gates or the golden streets that the scripture talks about no what will make heaven attractive is that we will behold the one who sent his only son to die for our sins What makes a home attractive? Is it the beautiful furniture the house has, the stately rooms, beautiful kitchen, state of the art, marble tile, plasma screen. Many houses have all these things, but they are like what washed graves. They are like graves. Ha ba taka kama twama. But ana lento tsena ka ofela ha o kena mo ho ho tle But they are so cold how bad When you hear a sound coming from the room is fighting quarrelly There is no love That is why the wise men said in Proverbs 15 verse 17 I rather eat I rather be in a house where they eat vegetables than be in a house where there's meat and quarrels. The wise men also repeated again in Proverbs 17 verse 1 that I rather eat a crumb a dry crust of bread than to be in a house full of food but there are quarrels and fights. That is what the wise men say. because many things we see or we think they makes homes attractive there are many houses that has all this thing but the house is cold that is why many of us we want to marry beautiful wives and those wives they hate our families because you are attracted by physical things material things not the love the man had not the love the woman had what will make heaven attractive is the thought that we will see the one who gave himself up for us to die on the cross imagine going to heaven and just it just end there everyone will want to see jesus everyone will want to see who you want to see god you want to see his son jesus christ 
That is what will make it attractive. 